In the previous video, I showed you how we could control and sculpt the light on this photo here by creating a dodge and a burn layer. Editing with layers in Luminar Neo is an extremely powerful photo editing tool, and I strongly recommend you take it and put it in your editing toolkit. Let's continue working with that photo and explore what else we can do with the layers. Let's get into Neo. As a quick review, on the left-hand side here, you can see we have our base layer, and then we have two identical looking layers on top. The only difference is I changed one blend mode to multiply, and I changed the other to screen. So we took our original photo that looked like this, and crafted the light so we ended up with this. So from our original to this. Well now I've got the photo looking more how I want it, what I need to do so I can use this look as a layer itself, I need to export this. So I'm just gonna jump into the catalog, right click, and come to export, and I'm just gonna send that out as a new JPEG. I have already done that, and you can see that here. So these two photos look identical. The only difference is this version here actually has no edits applied because that is the new version of the photo. But just so we can hop back to our original whenever we want, I am gonna work on this photo here. That includes our dodge and burn layers. But now what I'm able to do is come over and add a new layer, and this time, unlike in our dodge and burn edit where I introduced the original layer back over itself, now I'm going to introduce our dodge and burn version over the top. So I'm just opening that up and I click on it, and we shouldn't see any difference. So if I grab the opacity slider, push that to 100, drop it to zero, it should look exactly the same, because effectively this layer is the sum of the three layers that exist underneath. And just like last time, the key to working with layers in this way is to change the blend mode. So if I mouse over the different effects we have here, you can see that this layer is now interacting with the layers below it in a slightly different way. And one option that I really like is soft light. So I'm gonna apply that, and as you can see, it's created a much more contrasty look to our photo. So this was our before, this was our after. It's a little too intense, and what we could do is just drop the opacity. That is one way to control that contrasty look. But another option that I like to do is now we have the blur tool inside Luminar Neo, we can actually soften this look up. So you watch this, as I start boosting this amount, we're creating a kind of glow effect to the photo. So how far you take this is entirely up to you, but look, let's go for about 50%, close that down, and now we can come back to our layer properties, and just drop the overall opacity of that effect. Let's go about halfway. Again, let's look at our before and after. That's given us a really nice, soft, contrasty look very simply. If we feel things are just getting a little bit too dark, how about we reintroduce that same layer again, and this time, let's change the blending mode to screen. That's gonna brighten things up. Let's push the opacity all the way up, have a look at that. And what about this time, if we come down again to the blur effect, keeping with Gaussian, push it up, and now again, let's come to the layer properties and just sort of tickle this effect in. So this is none of the effect, that's 100% too much. I don't know, maybe we just want about 30%. Okay, let's go again, let's add another new layer. I'm gonna click this. It's nice and easy now that we've loaded that layer into the stack, it's always available to us. Every time we reload this layer over the top, we're basically killing the effect that we just created by 50% when it loads in. But that's kind of cool because it gives us the ability to create some nice hybrid effects. So let's say we wanted to just have a play around with curves and we thought that everything was just getting a little bit too dark on us. Or we can just grab the bottom left hand side of the curve here, start lifting that up. Obviously that controls the blacks in our photo and we can get a much softer look to our photo just by doing that. If we want to keep a bit of contrast in there, we can absolutely do that by adding the trusty S shape to our curve. And if we don't want the highlights to peek out too much, we can just put another point that controls the highlights and just bring that down so they're not getting too bright on us. We can also use this curve for color grading. So one of my favorite things to do is just jump into the blue channel here just by putting our little white dot in there. I can lift up the blue, so that's gonna to tone our shadows with a nice blue. And we can complement that by grabbing the highlights and starting to bring that down. So basically we're saying we want to remove the blue from the highlights by bringing that slider down. If you take it over this way, it's gonna add blue. And a good little tip for keeping your balance between the highlight color and the shadows 
is if that line passes straight through the middle of the curve here, you know that you're introducing the same amount of yellow into the highlights as you are blue in the shadows. But if that goes above that center point, you know you're weighting your color too strongly one way or the other. And that might be a nice creative decision you wanna do, but for me, I'm gonna keep these a little more balanced. No, no, something like that. So now let's come over and we can hide that layer so we can see the contrast effect that we previously created. And now I'm gonna show our color graded version. So we've lifted up those blacks, given it a more soft muted look, and we've also injected a little bit of a color grade. And now we've done that, I just wanna close down the layer properties so we lose that blue line there. And I'm gonna press the backslash key so we can see the original photo. And it's a great, lovely photo as it is, but this is what we've been able to create simply by playing around with layers in Luminar Neo. Here is our before and here is our after. Before and after. As you can see, I'm using Luminar Neo for these techniques, but these principles of how layers interact with those blend modes is just as applicable for other photo editors such as Photoshop as well. If you like the look of Neo and you don't have it yet, I do have a discount code from the link in the description below. And if you use that, I get a small commission and that just helps me keep creating this free content and free tutorials for you guys. So I appreciate that very much if you do use that link. So I've hidden our layer stack now so that we can see how this effect has been built up. First of all, I'm just gonna reveal our burn layer. So this is darkening down the shadows. So here's our before, here's our after, just adding a little bit of sculpturality, bit of form to the photo. Now we added a highlight layer. This is our dodge layer. So this is before, this is after, we've added in more highlights. And now if we have a look at how those two things combine together, we can see that we've really sculpted the form of that photo. We then exported this looking exactly like that and imported that new layer. And this layer we just changed from normal to soft light and that just added a really nice contrasty look and we blurred that layer as well. So if I hide the blur, you see that we get the contrast. With the blur, we also get a nice softening effect as well. From there, we added a screen layer with about 20%, and on top of that, we applied a bit of color grading. So here was our original, here was our after. And one of the really nice things about working in this way is if you decide that an effect is too much, so for example, we'd really gone heavy handed with this color grading. Um, we was kind of happy around 50%, but let's say we even thought that was too much. You've got the opacity slider. So you can come back in and fine tune things and say, you know what, I liked the look, but it was a little too strong. And you can do that with any of the layers. You know, you can intensify a layer if you want to, or just drop it back. It's entirely up to you. You've got that flexibility and control, and that makes it a really nice way to work. Guys, please let me know if these videos on using layers for editing have been useful to you. I love to get your feedback and opinion on the videos. If for some reason you missed the original video where I showed that dodge and burn technique, well, maybe you haven't subscribed already, so click that right there. But if you did miss that video, I'll put it right there for you right now so you can check that one out. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye-bye for now.